Hey there, I'm Darren Steele, and I'm bringing you a dose of human heartedness, some timeless wisdom and natural leadership. A few questions before I get started in today's topic. If you're a change leader, a creative, a disruptor, or somebody who wants to make a difference in the world, and you're just like me then, you probably forget about one of the most important things that you need to do that you should be doing that serves you really well in your own world. I'm going to give you a moment to think about it. So what do you think is the most important thing that affects your ability to make a difference, to show up, to do things easily? It, whether making a difference is at home with your partner, in your workplace, or for a larger social justice issue that you might be involved in? What is the thing that if you neglect it, you're not going to have very much influence, you're going to have very little impact, you're going to have hardly any power, because you're not going to feel at your best self. And when I say power, I don't mean power over, I just mean you're not going to feel empowered. Okay, do you know what I'm talking about? You've, you've probably already guessed. In fact, I've already said the word, I think I've said the word, feel. How do you feel? And more specifically, if you don't feel well, you can't be well, and, and you can't be effective and efficient in showing up to make a difference proudly and courageously at being the change that someone somewhere needs right now. Okay, so let me get into what today's video about is about. It's called, If You Don't Feel Well, Can You Truly Make a Difference? And if you see my eyes moving a little bit, I've got my notes. I want to make sure I don't miss anything because there's some really great stuff here to think about. So this is actually part one of what I'm calling a change leadership supports um, series of essays, freedom, energy, enthusiasm, and love. So why change leadership? Why not just leadership? Why not change maker? If you're anyone who is interested in making a difference, whether you're leading an organization, whether you're supporting other people in making a difference, whether it's your job that you love to do, but your work involves somehow making a meaningful difference. If you're trying to make a difference in your community, you're a change leader. I'll come back to that broader definition at some point, but just soak that in, take own that, right? So what happens if you don't feel well? Yeah, think about it, because it's it's very specific to each of us, right? And before I get into some of my points, like I wasn't feeling very well this morning and, you know, I wanted to do this video, but the, I needed to take care of myself. I needed to go downstairs, do 30 minutes of cardio. I sweat. I like smelt myself. Don't get grossed out. But I could smell that I was perspiring in a way that told me I hadn't been feeling well. I hadn't been really taking care of myself in the best way for a couple of days. That's just being attuned with your body. If if you know how you feel, if you know what your energy is like, if you even know what you smell like, as ridiculous as that, that may sound, these are all indicators of how you are feeling. And are you feeling well or are you not? So what happens if you don't feel well? Well, it's hard to function as your most authentic, influential, and powerful self. And if you're struggling in any way, let's say you've got something important that you need to do. How are you able to fully show up in that meaningful work to make a difference? And making a difference in the broadest sense of word, of the word, meaning just getting things done let alone actually making a meaningful difference if you're a change maker or a change leader. So your feelings are crucial to your influence and your impact. And when you're not feeling your best, your ability to tackle the problems or the challenges that you care about is greatly diminished. My own example, you know, when I'm feeling in the dumps for whatever reasons. And it's usually more than one thing. It's a few things that layer up, up 
on top of each other, almost like the snowball effect going the hell, going down the hill, going to hell, <laughs> going down the hill and collecting um, these these layers of things that bring us down, that bring us more into the undesirable feelings and emotions. If we catch it sooner than later, it's easier to recover. If we get to that point where the snowball hits a rock and we just crash, it takes a little bit more time to come back to feeling great. So FEEL, capital FEEL, F-E-E-L. That's an acronym that I like to use for freedom, energy, enthusiasm, and love. So let me go through these four vital elements of your well-being and help you place them in your own life to see how they affect you and if you prioritize them together as a whole, how they'll improve your experience of life. Okay, so freedom. Freedom from restrictions and stress. Energy. That's the natural abundance of like what you're able to do. And that's both your physical energy and your mental energy. Like that empowers your brain to think through, to solve problems, to think clearly. Physical energy to lift heavy objects or just get through your day without feeling tired and slouchy or whatever the case may be. Enthusiasm. Well, you could all say this is a part of the energy, but this is like the spark behind the energy and the peace of mind and your enjoyment of life, the enthusiasm that both makes you happy to be you and also attracts other people to be around you. And finally, love in its various forms. Now, I'm going to explain all of these in just a moment. So again, I know I'm flogging a dead horse as the horrible expression goes. If you're inspired to make a difference in the world, and if you're not feeling well, that impedes your ability to be effective. It just impedes your ability to have a wonderful, joyful life where you feel great, you have satisfaction and peace of mind, and you feel accomplished because you've been able to do what it is you set out to do, right? So when you're at your best and you feel well, this is my philosophy here. You can stand up courageously and proudly for what you know is right and support a common humanity of dignity and equity. That's what I mean by being a change leader. So how do you want to feel when you're making a difference? How do you want to feel about freedom, energy, enthusiasm, and love? And how can you work all those together? So let's work through this one by one. Freedom. You know that wonderful song by George Michaels? because you're free to do what you want to do. I've got to go back. I was thinking of Freedom by George Michael, and that's been on my brain for a little while. This is actually ultra nate, because you're free. And I can't believe I actually just sung and I'm going to publish this. Okay, because you're free to do what you want to do. Freedom is the ability to choose and the means to act on your choices, but it's also a state of mind. It's living without oppression. It's expressing yourself authentically and being true to who you are, being free to be those things. That's expansive, right? And of course, imagine now how freedom influences the next three aspects of feel. Energy. If you feel free, you've got the energy. I've got the power. Well, remember that from Snap in the 90s? Understanding how to manage and optimize your energy during the day, during the week, and even during the month is crucial. You might be like, day, week, and month? I'm just worried about having enough energy for this morning. Well, later on, I'm going to talk about how you can manage your mind as opposed to your time and how this makes you very effective and to be able to enjoy more of your life and more free time. Anyway, coming back to energy, this can be the difference between burning out early on in the day, maybe even by 10 o'clock in the morning, or being highly productive throughout your day. And when I mean highly productive, I don't mean pushing yourself and pushing the pedal to the metal and forcing yourself. I just mean being highly efficient. It's easy to be productive because you've got the energy, because you're maybe in flow state, because you're not thinking about it. 
So when you recognize and know what depletes your energy and what nurtures your energy, that will allow you to design your day around the tasks and the projects that align with your energy levels. And that prevents burnout, that enhances efficiency. That's what leads to what I like to call efficient productivity. Efficient because you're not pushing yourself. It's almost easy. That doesn't mean that the work you're doing won't be challenging, intellectually challenging. Maybe sometimes you might be furrowing your brow because you're thinking through strategically how to solve a problem. I'm not diminishing any of that stuff. I just mean it's easier to get through it because you're not feeling like you need to run out and get sugar or coffee or some sort of a stimulant to keep yourself going. Okay, we've just gone through freedom and energy. We got enthusiasm and love. So enthusiasm, I call this the energy multiplier. Enthusiasm is about living your life fully, completely, doing what's meaningful and fulfilling and being your authentic self. Now, I know not everyone can do that all of the time. Maybe you're doing some work right now that is facilitating, that is helping you pay the bills while you're working on something else. Maybe you're fortunate enough to be starting something or fully into some kind of work or creativity that is everything. That is your dream work and that's entirely meaningful to you and you get to enjoy that all the time. But even in that, there's going to be administration, things you have to do that you don't like doing. But all the other elements are contributing and feeding into that enthusiasm, which makes it easy to multiply your energy because you feel good about it. So when you operate from this place of enthusiasm, it's like using energy efficient tools. You, you can achieve more with less effort. I like to think of LED light bulbs that the switch from incandescent to LED, they're far more efficient. They burn much longer and they use very little energy compared to the old fashioned light bulbs, right? So enthusiasm supports efficient productivity and efficient use of your energy. Therefore, you can accomplish more without burning out or feeling frustrated or angry. Now, finally, love. What's love got to do with it? I just did it again. Jeez, I sang. Okay. Tina Turner did it much better than I did. But when you feel love, you tap into your capacity for acceptance, connection, and care both for yourself and for others. Now, acceptance, connection, and care, they make up, they're kind of like the, the three pillars of what love is. I'm not talking just about like loving your dog or loving your partner or loving your kids. Yes, that can be part of it, but love is this singular word that we have that often is used in too much of a hallmark way, but when you can open up your heart in a sense for accepting, understanding, connecting, and caring for others, that means you have that for yourself. That means you are more open to be intellectually flexible. Um, you're more willing to be impartial in analyzing a situation without being critically judgmental. It means that you might be more ready and open to hearing someone's point of view, even if challenging, before trying to force your opinion onto others. So when you are more accepting and open to connection and caring, what does that feel like for you? What's your energy like? What kind of emotions, what other emotions are coming up? These are all feel good emotions. They're empowering. They feed your enthusiasm. They make you feel more free. They increase your energy. So you see how this all works together. So I've said this already in some way, shape or form, but love opens the door to understanding and compassion. It enables you to practice open hearted reasoning. Open hearted reasoning, I think is really important because 
logic and critical thinking. Often critical thinking is about coming to a very defined judgment about a particular situation. That would be kind of the definition somewhat philosophically, coming to a judgment. But open-hearted reasoning would mean how do we think logically through a problem or a situation but also bring in the human-heartedness aspect, the open-heartedness aspect, the compassion, the acceptance, the connection, the care, the understanding. That allows us to recognize, to see the value and the dignity of others before us. And finally, love is the pathway to humility, not humbling yourself and allowing other people to step over you, but just allowing other people to be who they are without judgment and being open to understanding where they're coming from and who they are without having to put your needs before theirs. It's the pathway to gratitude, to thankfulness, to appreciation, and to making meaningful connections to building bridges. So bringing this all together to a conclusion, the impact of not feeling well, especially if you don't feel well for a long time. Take a moment and think about how not feeling well affects you, how it's affected you. How are you feeling right now? If you're not feeling well, what are, what are some of the feelings? What are the emotions? What are the thoughts that are going through your head? Let me give you some examples. Maybe you didn't sleep well last night. That's a pretty common one, right? Whatever reason, it was too hot, it was too cold, maybe you ate too much food too late, drank too much, whatever. So you didn't sleep well. You wake up and you feel tired or you feel exhausted, right? Well, a lack of sleep, it's going to drain you physically. Maybe you don't feel like going to the gym. Maybe you need to sleep in a little bit longer. Your cognitive abilities are not 100%. They're compromised. You know, decision-making, problem-solving isn't as efficient. Maybe you can get it done, but you're like, oh, I just wish I could take a nap today, right? So your ability to think clearly is diminished. But let's look on uh, to the more extreme. Maybe you had a conflict. Maybe you lost a really important client. Maybe you were faced with a very significant setback, some really challenging situation in your life. Well, your stress levels skyrocket. Maybe you get frantic. Maybe you get anxious. There might be feelings of threat, like what's going to happen. Maybe it's something to do with money insecurity or relationship insecurity, and you just fear what's going to happen. How am I going to solve this problem? Those kinds of emotions are, are almost crippling and can be completely crippling for some people. They can impair your logical thinking and reasoning. They diminish your emotional well-being, your desired emotional states, and they completely disrupt your peace of mind. So feel. How do you want to feel? What does freedom, energy, enthusiasm, and love mean to you? And how can you apply that to making a difference? What small, immediate action, what small, simple step can you take right now that will help you feel better, that will improve how you feel? What's a single step that you could take that would make you feel that you had more of an ability to choose? What would be one action you could take that would improve your energy? What would it take for you to feel more enthusiasm? What's one small practice you can try? And what about love? What's a step you can take to embrace acceptance, connection, or care? So when you can identify the barriers that are making it hard for you to feel well, that's the first step towards reclaiming your ability to make a meaningful impact. That's the first step towards taking some action that will improve how you feel so you can show up more easily and make a difference in the world as a change leader, change maker, a creative, however you label yourself. I would love to know. Let me know in the comments, what is the small, most immediate action you can take to start feeling better, to feel well right now? Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I'm Darren Steele.